Hello, I'm Therudine Nelson Bellingmo from Team Devotion, and I'm going to present to you the importance of documenting autonomous tests. This is a part of a project uh, with the Konsberg and is supported by the European Space Agency. On the image here you see some uh, vessels outside of the Trondheim. And what we want to investigate in this project is how can autonomous tests be documented and why? Firstly, I'll say something about the motivation, and then I'll get into a specific test here at Tronesfjord, which you see on the image here to the right. And then I'll get into a demonstration we have performed in this area, and lastly, a short conclusion. Here you see a map of at least half of the world, where I have uh, located some of the test areas that exist today for autonomous vessels. And by test area, I mean a facility for doing in situ tests of autonomous vessels. So the idea here is that um, consider that uh, autonomous tests have been performed in a test area in Norway, and they have gained some knowledge and learned some lessons from doing this test. That in the United States, in their test area, they also performed another autonomous test with the different learnings. And now um, the challenge is here is how can these um, lessons learned be shared between these uh, test areas? Because today there are no common understanding of how these tests should be done or documented. In this project, we have looked at the one specific test area, Trondesvjord, located here in uh, Norway. And it's uh, a, a quite a huge test area with, with different kinds of sensors and technology. And this test area is a cooperation between different kinds of maritime actors. And the goal is to foster knowledge by having this cooperation and to test and verify different solutions. In this specific project, which is a part of the NAVIS, uh, NAVIS project at ESA, we have installed some sensor infrastructure in the Trondheimsjord, including a DGNSS um, reference station, which is a position correction sensor. And we have also installed a new AIS space station and a maritime broadband radio, a short MBR for communication, and also a VDES, which is a communication unit as well, to monitor this uh, installed infrastructure and to uh, enable remote control of uh, the vessel. We have developed a test area control center, or TAC for short. Additionally, um, we developed an application called the Data Center uh, with the information and functionality to support uh, uh, maritime operations and conducting autonomous tests, in addition to documenting and sharing the results from these tests. So in this project, we have done a demonstration using this uh, ocean space drone vessel on the image here to the right and the goal of the demonstration was to demonstrate remote control from this test area control center at shore and to have automatic control uh, where the vessel follows a predefined route so to document and plan this test we have used this uh, de developed data center Here is the um, illustration of the um, position track from this uh, demonstration, where the intended route is illustrated in green, the green line here, solid line, and then we have the wider line with the varying colors, which is the actual route, actual track, uh, during this demonstration. So 
we have tested the different kinds of control modes here at the beginning. The vessel was operated uh, with manual control by the onboard skipper. And then we went into automatic control where the goal was to follow this predefined route. And then there's a part here of the route with remote control where the vessel was remotely controlled from the test area control center at shore. So the colors here on the line indicate the cross track error, which is a measure of um, how far the vessel is from the intended line. So in the remote control, you see that the cross track error is quite large. And this is intended to show that the vessel was in fact remotely controlled from shore. And what we have learned from this uh, test is that firstly, the vessel is able to navigate under different autonomy levels, here both manual and automatic modes. And we have seen that by using the established infrastructure like the AIS, the communication units, the positioning uh, sensors, and uh, this has simplified doing in situ tests. So this is quite different than doing simulations and it's one of the large benefits of having such a test area where you can in fact test in real conditions. <laughs> Lastly, uh, the test results uh, have been documented in a summarized format in the data center where I included some information like the location, time, test type, technology, weather, traffic, and some lessons learned. So by inserting this into the data center, it will be inserted in the standardized format. And so it will be easy to compare and share with other actors in the maritime industry who can learn and benefit from these kinds of tests. To conclude, uh, the sensor infrastructure that we have installed is essential for conducting autonomous tests. And we believe that this applies to other areas as well, not only this test area. Secondly, uh, there is a need to have platforms or applications to document and share autonomous tests like the data center that we have developed in this project. Lastly, uh, the test results summary should be documented in the standardized format so it would be easy to compare and share with other stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you, Paulina. Um, I think we are ready for some uh, questions for Paulina, if, if you have. There is none online. Anyone from the room? It seems not. Um, so, in that case, uh, I will uh, proceed uh, to the next presentation. Thank you, Paulina.